So here is the beginning of the acoustics and these are all going to come in just random order. There's no importance or uh, brand, anything that's going to come together as more important or less important when it comes to any of them. This is just me putting together a video of all the acoustics in one video and then the electrics in another video. So um, here's the first one. This is a Gibson G45. The generation version of the J45 and it is <clears throat> if I remember correctly a 19 model so it is a 2019 model I could remember if it was a 18 or 19 but it is a 2019 model and therefore it does have the Fishman but it does not have the player port that the new G45s do. And I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of happy about that. I've played one of the new G45s at a local store. It's a little trippy. I know you can buy the little thing to plug the port or maybe it comes with it, but I, I just would rather not have it. Now, the appointments on this one, because it is a studio or a, it's not the top uh, model, it has the walnut, pretty much everything with a spruce top, and it plays and sounds great. It is absolutely one of the most comfortable Gibsons I've played, and to this day still remains the reason that I have not gotten an actual Gibson J45. Now this is the Taylor 810 WMB. And it is a 97 model. Now, as we've talked about before on the channel, this guitar was from a short-lived run of special guitars that before there was a Taylor Custom Shop, they made some special editions. This was a summer edition of 97 that I bought new off of the showroom floor at Straight Music in Austin, Texas. And this guitar is the reason I don't have more Martins and it's also the reason I don't have any Taylor acoust uh, cu custom shop stuff because every time I pick one up I compare it to this guitar and for me this guitar is in my just what I think a Taylor should be and it's very hard to get past that so I do have a couple of other Taylors we will talk about those later on but this is what started it all for me in Taylor's and I have zero regrets about this guitar. If you ever find an 810 WMB for sale, buy it. They were very limited in their production and they are absolutely worth every penny you'll pay for one. As long as it's not like a million dollars or something like that. But you can see the way the sound hole rosette i guess that is i guess it's an abalone setup but these guitars were absolutely worth the money they were i got mine for less than two thousand dollars out the door so but that was 1998 i'm not sure you can pull one off for that kind of price anymore even in the used market This is the Taylor GS Mini E Koa. And if you're looking for a small body guitar to keep out or just have somewhere in your world that will allow you to play it whenever you want to and not worry about whether or not it is bounced around or anything like that. These guitars are pricey, but worth it. They sound great. This is the Koa model, and it is 100% worth the money you pay for them. I would not hesitate to take this guitar anywhere. I have taken it to the beach. I have taken it to people's houses. I have left it out. I've put it back in its case. 
it has lived a wonderful life of mostly sheltered world, but sometimes not. My daughters play it. It was originally purchased for my daughter, and it sort of is hers, but I'm the one who plays it most of the time, so we're going to go back and forth on that one. Like I say, Co Taylor GS Mini E Koa model, worth the penny, worth every penny that you pay for them. They, there's a reason that they are pretty much the standard for small body guitars, especially by Taylor. So this is the Fender New Porter Acoustic. Now, there is a modern New Porter, and it does have a different shape to it. These were made in the 80s, and they were a part of the California series that Fender started making overseas. Now, this particular one, according to the spec sheet, says it has a laminate mahogany front, back, and sides. That's possible. Plausible, even. I would almost argue that there's a possibility that these had solid tops, but the back and sides is almost definitely made of a laminate. Now, since we have seen 60s era Gibson ESs that were made from laminate that are still in good shape and sound amazing, I would say that there's definitely a possibility that there's also a laminate top as well. But the sound that comes out of this guitar after just changing the nut and saddle to a bone nut and saddle is pretty impressive and the action is good the it holds in tune really well i don't think i would discourage anybody from buying one especially if you can find one from this era that is in good shape and hasn't been just banged up and beat down pretty bad this one has had friendship bracelets on it since I was in high school over 20 years ago. So, actually, 30 years ago. So this guitar has traveled the world with me. Georgia, all, all the way into Georgia, all across the southern United States, from California to Georgia. This guitar has had road trips that probably could be written write songs about, but since I'm not good enough to do something like that, that would be somebody else's job. But like I say, Fender New Porter from the, it's an 86 model, so it's a California series, uh, made in like Indonesia, I think, maybe, maybe Korea, somewhere, but it is a foreign made guitar and the quality on them has been pretty amazing considering the time in which it was made overseas. So this is the Martin D15M and it was the first one I ever found that I really just couldn't pass up on the sound. And I picked one up and played it and hoped that this one would sound the way the one I picked up in the store did. And sure enough, it did. Normally not a Martin guy. Generally will migrate towards Taylors, especially older Taylors versus a Martin. But this particular one, this particular model, maybe I should say, was one that I just fell in love with and couldn't pass up. These are budget guitars. They're not cheap guitars. They are budget guitars. And if you are looking for a good all-around player that you can play anywhere this might just be your guitar so this one is definitely the oldest guitar in the group by a pretty serious long shot this was purchased for my grand my great grandfather or grandfather i'm not exactly sure exactly which one i think it was my grand my dad's dad and it was Somewhere in the late 40s, early 50s, these guitars were sold by Sears, J.C. Penney, some department stores, and were catalog guitars. They're so cheap that they don't actually have 
serial numbers anywhere that we can find. So there's really no way to track down exactly when this guitar was made. We know it by looking at the way it was constructed and the other ones that are similar to it, that it was made somewhere in the late forties, early fifties. So it is a hollow body. So therefore it is technically acoustic, but it is an arch top and it does an amazing job of being a pretty solid player. Now that it's got round, round, round wound strings on it because at first it had flat wounds and it just wasn't doing very good at that. More of a bass guitar thing to have flat wound strings, but this guitar, as it turns out, is kind of becoming valuable. They're kind of a cult classic because of what they are. This one has a bridge that has a pickup built into it so it can be plugged in and that makes it kind of fun. So this one is the 63 Dove and it is probably the second oldest guitar by an equally distant margin versus everything else. This one was purchased by my dad in 1963. It has been in our family ever since. When my dad went to Vietnam, his mom would not let him sell this one or get rid of it at all. She insisted on keeping it. She kept it safe. When he came home from Vietnam, it was there waiting for him. And as such, it has been a family heirloom ever since. This one has 13 gauge strings on it and has done amazing good job of staying in pretty decent shape over the years. Got the usual lacquer shrink going on there. This has peeled off and the lacquer is missing from this part of the crown. But overall, this guitar still plays and sounds amazing. And it just keeps on blow, blowing air. So we keep on loving it. So best we can tell, this one is a 101 in this color. As it turns out, there is more. But the only other one we've been able to find that was made by the custom shop is an ebony finish made about the same time. This one was made in 1992, was originally commissioned to be finished in 93, but Ren Ferguson, who at the time was the head of the Gibson Acoustic Custom Shop, apparently wanted to finish this guitar early. Possibly because all the tools were already on the jig for making the ebony, ebony one. So, which came first? The ebony or the cherry sunburst? No one really knows. But this dove has recently had a makeover, or at least a reset up, by the Gibson Garage in Nashville. And has a great feeling to it. So, if, you ever, if you're ever in Nashville and you have a classic guitar that's a Gibson, take it to the Gibson Garage. They did a great job of setting it up and making this one not only look, but also sound like new again. Actually, I think it sounds better than it did new. Got tuned down to, o, to D standard instead of E standard, and that really has given it a new life in my world. Now, of course, we get to the 2022 Dove, and it is an amazing guitar. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this one ages. It does have a pickup, the LR bags in it versus the 63 not having a pickup at all. Very purist, as it was in the era. But this guitar has the same feeling as the 63, and it really does make you realize how much has gone into the changing of these guitars to make them be similar but modern at the same time. It's interesting that 
this guitar was so interesting like, to get because they just don't seem to be delivering many of these at the time. Now, that could be because of the pandemic. It could be because of weather in Bozeman. I don't really have a good answer for that. But this one came from Gibson, and it is a pretty stellar guitar for something that is just going to be an heirloom to my children. Now, I will say this. This is a $4,000 guitar, and the 63 Dove in 1963 was a $300 guitar. Second year back in those days, so there's a little bit more to the history of it now. So it commands a little bit more money because of the craftsmanship that goes into it, as well as the fact that it's just more modern. Things have gotten more expensive. Welcome to the new world. And this brings us to the Hummingbird. This one is unique in my world because I always thought that the Dove and the Hummingbird both had pick guards that were etched in. And this is not. This is inside of a vinyl slash plastic overlay. So this doesn't rub off. That could be something specific to this model. It could because be because this is a prototype. I don't really have a good answer for that. I do know this. This is more likely to keep its color and appearance much longer than the Dove. But anyway, so this guitar is unique in what it does because it is a hummingbird, but it is a prototype. And I don't know exactly what makes it different than other ones, but it was apparently a, a prototype for a special run that they were about to do. And that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Anything more than that would have to come from Gibson. It does, however, sound amazing. This is the AD27. And it has a K and K pure mini added to it. It does not have the Taylor, whatever their latest version of the electronics that they put in their guitars are. The Taylor has a specific deal where theirs is, it has a name. I don't know what it is. I just know the K and K pure mini on this guitar sounds amazing. It does a really good job of giving off the what I think true sound of the guitar is now the 27 and the AD17 both have a satin finish to them that is really if you look closely you can see how it just kind of sinks in and that finish really does kind of make it more resonant now having the 810 WMB makes it hard for me to find tailors that I really enjoy. But the price on the American Dream guitars really is spot on for what they are. They're guitars you can take anywhere. They sound good. They play right. It's a slope shoulder versus the square shoulder that the 810 is. So a little bit different sound overall, but they do not disappoint when it comes to playability or sound. If you're looking for an acoustic that you can go anywhere with and still be below that $2,000 mark, as of right now, this is one of the best you can buy. And speaking of the other American Dream guitar, this is the 17 Blacktop. And it's still probably one of my favorite guitars to own. It's comfortable. It looks unique. It's just a great guitar. It and the 27 have very similar sounds, but they are each unique. The mahogany and mahogany uh, other, uh, I forget which one's Sapele and which one's Oven Call. I think the Sapele is on the 
27 and the oven call is on the 17. But mahogany versus spruce and rosewood equivalent really does make a difference. They both have a very tonal characteristic that is similar because they have, they emphasize the same pitches, but the way they sound, the 27 kind of rings differently. And because it rings differently, it really does give its own voice and gives a little bit of undertone that the 17 really doesn't do. So which one's better? Kind of depends on what you're doing. I think if you're singing along with it, get the 27. I think if you're looking to play, get the 17. So, but this one is still a pretty good bargain, even though they're more expensive than they were at new. And even now, the Martin is, I believe, still less expensive than the Taylor. This is well worth the money, in my opinion. I would definitely not hesitate to buy another one if they came up with something that I thought was just absolutely worthy of owning being different in some way. So my own personal take. So that is it for what we have in acoustics for 2022. Now on some level, I'm sure something else will come along. It'll wind up in the collection and we'll have an unboxing and we'll have videos and other stuff as 2023 carries on. But as of right now, that is everything we have for the acoustics. I don't know how many that is. There's always whatever you have plus one is what you need. So anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Which one was your favorite? Um, if you have questions about any of them, ask in the comments. I'll gladly talk about them. There's videos, pretty much everything as of right now. So, you know, check them out. There's all over the channel. There's different guitar talks about and comparisons of all the different guitars and looking forward to doing more of that in 2023. Till next time, enjoy.